too fly, won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret That you all find out in this daggum space, huh? Romance? Adventure? <laughs> what kind of romances are out here for the love of Pete? We're muddling about in this emptiness like a like a teaspoon in a glass. As if we solved all the problems on Earth, huh? Uh, uh, As if it were better to cultivate new ground or something. Uh, how? Pardon me, old fashioned of you. Our universe is. Amazing and beautiful, and our Earth is merely a cradle out of which mankind should have long ago climbed out of. Earth isn't a cradle. It's a home. A home which protects us from all the universe's dangers. Space is a real hotbed of various cruel and dangerous things. Let's take the sun, for example. It's thousands of degrees. It wouldn't fry us up and not even notice. And that's not even the brightest star in the universe. And then there's nasty things in space like space radiation, streams of particles from stars and other radioactive gunk. We can't even see it and it might be getting a lethal dose. I'm not even mentioning meteorites and comets darting around the universe here and there. But the Earth protects us from all these troubles with an atmosphere and a magnetic field. The atmosphere keeps the sun from frying us up while keeping the warmth in so we don't freeze at night. Comets and meteorites can't even get to us because they burn up in our atmosphere like nothing doing. And the magnetic field protects us from space radiation. And most importantly, the Earth has air. In space, it's just a vacuum with nothing but misfortune. We're strangers out here in space, you understand? And strangers we will always be. I think I know what's <laughs> making you so upset, my negative friend. It's that you've never been out in open space. <laughs> What's there that I haven't seen already? If you spend all the time, as you say, muddling about inside the sphere jet, then you can't truly judge the universe's true beauty. Spacesuit mode on! Let's go outside right now, shall we? And you'll see just how fantastic open space really is. I don't want to. That is, I have plenty to do inside the sphere jet. And anyways, I don't have any time. I've been sitting here too long already. I've got an idea. Computer, turn off artificial gravity. Gravity is turned off. You wake him up. Wake up, my space hating friend. Surprise! Now you can experience to your heart's content all this true beauty. Mercy What's me, the matter? I'm in space! Whoa! Whoa. Relax! Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're totally safe! Whoa. Uh, 
I didn't know that you had a phobia about space. How come? Why didn't you tell me earlier? There's no reason to be ashamed of your fears. You should tell your friends about them, and it will be much easier. I, for example, have an irrational fear about speaking in foreign languages. Weird, no? You see, every night, since we started conquering the universe here, I have the same dream every night. I am in open space. All around are various stars and nebulae. And then something happens. Something like a short circuit. And then I understand, that's it. Every night, the same thing. But that's just a dream. Space and reality is not really that harmful for organisms like us. One of the most common misconceptions about space is that it's really cold there, and that means an unprotected organism would instantaneously turn into ice. That's not true. In reality, space is made up of a vacuum, and vacuums are one of the best thermal insulators there are. It's for good reason they're used in thermoses. Therefore, it would take a long time for our bodies to cool down, and some simple athletic exercises would keep us from freezing altogether. There's a much higher possibility not of freezing, but of being overheated in some star's radioactive rays. But if you're far enough away from them, then there's nothing to be scared of. Another myth about space is that it will inflate you from the inside due to internal pressure. But the difference in external pressure between the Earth's surface and open space is only one atmosphere, and that's not very much. An increase in pressure of one atmosphere is what a diver would feel descending to a depth of 10 meters. And our bodies could withstand that without any harm. The most important thing is to exhale to avoid unnecessary pressure on the lungs. Truthfully, in the absence of pressure, there are other dangers. As it happens, liquids boil faster than at lower pressures. Therefore, in a vacuum, it will boil almost instantly. And if liquids inside an organism are protected by our internal pressure, then external liquids will evaporate immediately. Therefore, the tongue and face will soon dry up. So, taking into account the lack of air, we could easily last in space at least a couple minutes. Of course, you'd lose consciousness after about 10 seconds, but the likelihood of survival is much higher than, for example, molten lava from a volcano. <laughs> Get me back to Earth. I feel more comfortable in my cradle. Well, let's take a break. Before we go, then. There's no need to take a quick break for anything. I looked into Spheroscope and discovered one very useful invention from the future. It's called Antiphobe. One injection of this and you'll be rid of all your phobias and fears. Uh-huh. Along with your life, too. No, not at all. There's no threat to your health whatsoever. Get that thingamajig away from me! Science should be trusted. Look here, nothing bad will happen at all. Oh, oh, Daco. Are you okay? Parlez-vous français? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Kazakh nicheni? Hola, mi llamo Daco. Como estas? Daco, where are you going? Mon crayon est grand et jeune. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Hey, where are you going? Voglio un pizza pepperoni. Dobre pajovat v Moscou. Wait, wait, will you please get me? Je ne comprends pas, je vais bien. Ya, ya, that is fantastic. Homo, Wait. Homo homini lupuses, regime scafander, hoogie isayo opa gangum style. Hey, quit fooling around. Por favor, hable mas despacio, yo no caprendo. Taco?
Taco, over. Come back here immediately. Terefe, quitos. Computer, bring him back immediately. Incorrect request. Spearjet is not equipped with external tools. Non parlo molto bene italiano. Ripeta, per favore, arrivederci. And where did you go? You linguistic disaster? Surprise! Attention, danger. Spacesuit is depressurizing. Return to ship immediately. Attention, Daco. danger. Spacesuit mode Attention, on. danger. <sighs> what the heck is this? Is okay, okay, I'm coming. Return to ship Already. immediately. Hold on. Attention, uh, danger. Uh, dang you. <laughs> so, taking into account the lack of air, we could easily last in space at least a couple minutes. Of course, you'd lose consciousness after about 10 seconds, but the likelihood of survival is much higher than, for example, molten lava from a volcano. down this is this is embarrassing <laughs> pardon moi monsieur i'll be right back to untie you i'm just gonna fly around it's so beautiful out here that it hurts i'll be darned open space waiting when you wait the seconds drag on and on like they're teasing you and when you at last get what you were waiting for you don't get any satisfaction out of it no joy at all our whole life is waiting we wait for the water to boil or for inspiration to occur. We wait for news, or wait our turn. Or for the right moment. In summer, we wait for winter. And in winter, we wait for summer. We wait for our birthday or New Year's, and we wait for the weekend. Calendars and clocks are the worst inventions in the world, but even Without them, we'd still be waiting for something. How is it possible to derive any pleasure from this gardening? It's simply impossible. How do we wait till this grows into a tomato? Hey, don't wait too long. Hey, it's a cucumber. What's the difference? What's your secret, Barry? How do you have enough patience to wait for everything to bloom? Hey, I just love gardening. And I couldn't live without it. <laughs> During winter? In winter, you can't do any gardening. How do you have the patience to wait for the spring? In the winter, I sleep. <laughs> and then it's springtime. You, uh, you fall asleep to avoid waiting. That's genius. <laughs> but how? How can you sleep through the entire winter? <laughs> well, it's so cold that all the organism's processes slow down. In 
hunter instinct. And that affects all organisms or just fair ones? All of them, I would think. I read a few days ago that they found a frozen frog, like a block of ice. They unfroze it and presto, it was jumping all around. Uh, uh, why do you care? Uh, 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 all your functions are slowed down. And you can sleep as much as you want and when you want. If it really works, then no more waiting. What is this? Some sort of new fad sitting in refrigerators? It worked with the frog. Then, then froze him and he was good as new. But you're not a frog. <laughs> you're very much a warm-blooded sheep. <laughs> and you need to keep your frame warm. <laughs> Although overheating's not good either. Our ideal body temperature is 36.6. Changing our temperature up or down by as little as one degree and we would become very cold or hot. If our temperature changes by as much as four degrees, then watch out. Our lives are in danger. All of this sensitivity is due to the fact that our body's vital processes are carried out with the help of enzyme. These are substances which accelerate or slow down various chemical reactions in the organism. And these enzymes are very sensitive to changes in temperature. For most of them, the ideal temperature is 37 degrees. But at 40, they are irreparably damaged. Due to this enzyme dependency, we need to protect ourselves from extremes. That's why we wear hats in winter and go swimming or hide in the shade in summer. Instead of hiding in refrigerators, at least spare a thought for your enzymes. And so I had to wait again. I was waiting to get better. But I couldn't stop thinking about the frozen frog. I wanted to study this issue more closely. And so far as I never had any patience, I decided to use the technology of the future. Spheroscope! How can I freeze myself so that I can wake up later on and not wait? And that's how I learned about the fascinating science of cryogenics. Cryonics is the science of preserving biological objects with the aid of freezing. It turns out that lowering the body's temperature slows down the molecule's thermal motion and therefore the speed of all chemical reactions. At freezing, our body doesn't just save stress from unnecessary waiting, it also stops getting cold. In the future, scientists learn to freeze astronauts during long flights between planets. Before, of course, teleportation was invented. Astronauts could remain in this condition for years and not grow old or die from boredom. The unpleasant part turned out to be that our bodies are comprised of about 70% water. And when frozen, water turns into ice which tears tissue. Yuck. It was easier for insects and frogs. Their blood contains a thing called glycerin. This glycerin protects their organisms from damage while frozen. Ha! <laughs> and none the worse, ha! <laughs> For the more unlucky ones, a new method was created. Instantaneous freezing. Due to the rapid decrease in temperature, water molecules aren't able to collide with each other and form ice crystals, which means that our bodies stay whole and safe. <laughs> Needs to be done. And now 
After a few improvements, the refrigerator would be able to relieve me of any waiting quickly and safely. It'll be ready in an hour! <laughs> At last, the moment I had been waiting for when I no longer had to wait for anything or anyone. <laughs> wait until it cools down! Just a minute. It was a wonderful time. I had completely forgotten what waiting was, but what happened next was totally unexpected. <laughs> How much time did I spend frozen? Centuries? Or maybe even millennia? What happened to all my friends? What happened with our civilization? I don't know. Maybe I would have stayed frozen if Spearjet hadn't crashed on this deserted planet. I understood too late that our life is expectation and all its moments are invaluable even those that are long and tedious and i had missed them all and now all i had left was my last wait for myself i don't understand where's the ice cream i told you it was empty we dragged that heavy thing around for no reason. Hey, guys. <laughs> Everything's okay. What could possibly happen on this forsaken planet? Doko's carrying out his experiments while we all die of boredom out here. Uh, I just wanted to eat some ice cream. And Ben, for lack of anything else to do, is overhauling the sphere jet. My friends, I've discovered a fascinating anomaly. I'm afraid we'll have to stay here for a couple more weeks. Oh, what are you got to get me? Oh, hey. Enough's enough. That's okay. Oh. We'll wait. some kind of sad animal. Why don't you get out and have some fun? For what? There's no garden. Nothing's real. <sighs> well, no room in space for nature. Look at this as new free time. You can't garden, but you can start a new hobby. I don't know where to start. I'm lost out here. Don't worry about me. I'm just an old farmer. <sighs> Look at how shiny. This one's perfect. Nah, <laughs> I'm good, thanks. 
I don't want it either. There's no pests on this ship. Nothing to protect all my crops from. Okay, sounds great. Let's go play games. This depressing environment is bad for my ears. Thought you could follow me into space, did you? Prepare to meet Ursa Major! So Barry seems lively all of a sudden. Not that it's bad. Should we be glad that he has a hobby? I'll um, put the bear in Barbarian! Mm, mm, no mercy for mm, bugs! Rage is totally better than bumming us out! <laughs> this spaceship ain't big enough for the two of us! <laughs> Look at what these monsters have done! My traps! Haven't been working! I can't live with this. Somewhere there's a pest and he's got to go. How phenomenal! He's in here somewhere. A stowaway and food thief. He's probably mm. been in here from the mm. beginning. A passenger from Earth. I don't care where. The important thing is that we find this thing. That might be hard. Our foods aren't see-through. See-through food? Now there's an idea. I might be able to solve your little problem all by using magnets. I'm no scientist, but worms aren't made of metal. Mm. I would use it another way. We already know how everything is made of atoms, and each atom has a nucleus, and electrons orbit this nucleus like they're stuck to it. So, in a way, nuclei are kind of like small magnets. But if they're magnets, why don't we all stick to metal stuff? Shouldn't forks be stuck to our bodies? Well, the magnets in a nucleus are pretty weak. Plus, the magnetic field is pulled in every direction, so it can't really propel us in a direction. But if we were to put them in a magnetic field, however, now things are different. Those nuclei line up their magnetic poles to the same direction. Oh, this means anything that's not a metal can become a magnet? Uh, not quite. The nuclei of a non-metal wouldn't quite line up the right way. In fact, they might just wobble around for a while kind of confused. This weird phenomenon is called nuclear precession. Okay, I still don't get it. So wobbly atoms are going to help us find a bug? This will all make sense soon. We just need to find the speed of this bug's nuclear precession. Every nucleus spins at a different speed, which means there's a different frequency between sugar and water. If we find out what that speed is, we can figure out the quantity of water and sugar inside a piece of fruit, such as a watermelon. Isn't it awesome? We can use these spinning nuclei and take a look right inside. Nucleus-tastic! Pesticides work good, too. You should have more faith, Barry. There's no way this plan could go wrong. Hear I that? Mean, They're the going to figure out everything. Well, don't worry. When we get to it. <laughs> Let's go. Initiating particle shrinkage. <laughs> Where should we feast today, Chico? Apple City? How about going for citrus today? How about vegetables? I've been a little nutrient uh, deficient. All right then. Destination Carrotville. Oh, man. Look at that. Magic. I have died and gone to Carrot Heaven. This thief went to Carrot Heaven. We have to find out why. 
Something about frequencies and stuff. Yes, frequencies. But what do you expect us to do? Find this bug with atomic x-rays? Doc, go look at it. I need help. Don't you worry. I've got a plan. <laughs> to figure out the speed of our nuclear procession, we'll need to zap them with some radio waves. Oh, you mean like the new Michael Bearblay single? No, more like a microwave. We measure the frequencies until they match and create resonance. Our equipment would be able to find the moment the resonance was created. This is called, well, nuclear magnetic resonance. With nuclear magnetic resonance, we can see inside almost any object. It's a little more complex than an x-ray, but the payoffs can be phenomenal. The ah, science is amazing. So we can use these magnetic nukes uh, on all my vegetables and stuff. Magnetic resonance and absolutely. So what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Prepare to be amazed by my nuclear magnetic resonance machine. I know we'll find your culprit shortly. Your fruits will be hit with an extremely strong magnet. From there, we'll be able to see its cross-section. <sighs> the magnetic waves travel through the apple and give us a perfect view into what's happening outside. This method is called tomography. Though it's not named after, you know, a guy named Tom. Amazing. Let's go now. Here, it's the last apple. Huh, no luck. That lot to help your magnet nuke thing he did to help my plants. I've still got some pesticide lying around. I'll use that and pummel him back to Earth. Hold your horses. I'm sure we just didn't look hard enough. Well, what do I do now? Just watch as all my crops get eaten away? I think we should look one more time at the ones that have been chewed. Hang on. Can we go zoom in on this one? We found him. <laughs> Thought he could get away. He's in a watermelon. That food thief. <laughs> I still feel really bad about this. What for? It's not for us. It's for Barry, right? We're just putting a sense of purpose back into his life. Huh? Shh. Uh, what's that? Mm -hmm. Over there. Let's move in. We don't uh, have to. Oh, there's nothing that can. Did we lose it? This is the end. Sweet honey, what are you two doing in there? <laughs> Obviously, we caught the worm for you. So, you're welcome. Yep. Oh. What were you thinking? That could have been so unsafe. What if I decided to bake? You both would have been in a pie. Goodness. We did it for Barry. Because 
He didn't have anything to do. Ha! Now he's not depressed, so you should thank us. Yes, who's my good little wormy, huh? I think somebody wants a delicious orange. <laughs> oh, gotta jump for it, my little thief. <laughs> I'll have to add some furniture for you. Nuclear magnetic resonance was discovered by Felix Bloch and Edward Mills Purcell. Their discovery made a huge impact on the world of science, and in 1952, they won the Nobel Prize in Physics. Decades later, Paul C. Lauterbur and Peter Mansfield invented a new method of magnetic resonance that would allow people to see inside things. You could now look inside human bodies or fruit or, yes, even inside a brain. This won them the Nobel Prize in 2003. Sorry, Barry, not in gardening. They won it for physiology. Twenty seconds remaining until docking with the model. Baby, reduce the speed by half. Shift to the right by one meter. Incorrect course. Time remaining until docking. There are five. Fifty four, centimeters higher. Three. To the two, left by twenty-three centimeters. One. Contact with the module. Contact with the module. Docking did not take place. Docking simulation is over. Hmm. If the docking had actually happened, we'd have all been completely kaput. Oh, no, no. We're all doing the right thing. Just need to calculate a bit more accurate. Tomorrow we will try again. Bad calculation is always bad. <laughs> Bibi, set the course higher by 34 centimeters. And now down by 19 centimeters and to the right by 13. The docking did not take place. Docking simulation is over. To the right by three centimeters. No, to the left. And one down. The docking did not take place. To the right, three and four hundredths of a millimeter. Down fifty-six hundredths of a millimeter. No, fifty-seven or sixty. Now we missed it again. Let's try even more precisely. Hey, young man, watch yourself. Ah, Bibi is very upset. We used to do everything together, but now... Huh, you think he's bothered about your tiny little mishap? Maybe he just isn't getting enough attention, huh? <laughs> you think Bibi is upset because of me? That can't be. It can. Where'd you get that? Yesterday before bed, you called him a, a model for docking. Huh. Hmm. Then what should I do? Just tell the truth that you love him and that you appreciate his help. Yes, but... Bibi is a robot. He wouldn't understand that. It's necessary to express everything in figures. Were you planning to measure love or something? Oh, ho, ho. you shouldn't underestimate mathematics. Mathematics is the queen of sciences. Simply no other science can exist without figures, calculations, and formulas. Whether you're playing music, painting a picture, writing a poem, whatever you're doing, you're still using mathematics. Because at the core, everything is harmony. Harmony which can be verified by precise mathematical calculations. 
If the notes in the melody go without a mathematical order, you have a cacophony. A picture which is pleasing to the eye is drawn according to the laws of symmetry and the golden ratio. And in a rhyme, each line has its own line length, and if broken, then such a work will be very difficult to listen to. Mathematics is the basis for everything. After all, our entire universe obeys mathematical law. Mathematics is the queen of science! Oh yeah? And the corn on the cob is the queen of the cornfields! But if we try an algorithm... Nine. That's not it. Imaginary numbers don't work either. Oh, wow. Well, you have a formula of love? That nothing's working. Maybe I need some special figure. It's just that you do not know how to express your feelings with words. That's why you're babbling. Where I come from, we didn't really talk too much. Huh, I can see that. But don't you have any warm memories from your childhood? Yeah, of course. In order not to freeze during the polar night, we'd cling on to each other. It was very warm and cozy. Oh, there you go. That's just lovely. But now there's no need for it. It's not cold at all. Yeah. Just hopeless. I'm very reliable. The whole problem is this silly module. There is no module, there is no problem. Just hopeless. Silly module. Bibi will find out how much Daddy loves him. Useless hunk of metal. Now you'll find out what an angry penguin looks like. Take that! All because of you! Why did I create you? Take that! Stupid! Useless! I created you! I'll destroy you! Hunk of junk! Emergency module has left base. Emergency module has left base. An unforeseen. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, nothing is working, and that is not good. Warning. The emergency module is not protected from cosmic radiation. Prolonged use is not recommended. me, I think I'll be offended. Since ancient times, we have been striving to measure and calculate everything more accurately, trying to invent more precise instruments and more powerful machines. But in the end, we've been forced to admit some things just do not lend themselves to an accurate measurement. For example, how to determine a tall house or a short one. Suppose you can say that the house is less than two meters, short. Then the question arises, what is the house two meters and one centimeter tall? Is it not considered short?
But if we move the border that divides the concepts short and tall, then the question still remains. To define such concepts, soft sciences was invented. Thanks to soft sciences, we can determine the height of the house more flexibly. Short, not very short, rather short than tall, rather short, more or less short. Such descriptions are known as linguistic variables. Soft sciences are suitable not only to determine our attitude to an object, but as found wide application in various technologies, where accurate definitions only slow down the process. For example, docking a spacecraft is much faster and safer with social commands. The multivariance of the correct answer is an important discovery in modern science, combining the exact science of psychology. It turns out exact numbers are not necessary. Speaking roughly, we'll be faster and better. That I can do. Full speed ahead. I'm sorry, Bibi. I never had time to tell you the most important thing. A little bit to the right, and now a little higher to the left. If you are reading these lines... No, better not. Dear Bibi, I never had time to tell you. <sighs> Docking was successful. Great, we docked. <laughs> Baby, I've got to tell you something important. I wrote it all down. Uh, I wanted to say... Baby, my son, your dad loves you. <gasps>